and maybe we could all learn how to treat each other better. And perhaps that began this weekend at the official memorial of Robert Mugabe. South Africa's president was forced to apologize for his nation's behavior in front of the continent and also send a special envoy to Nigeria to deliver a special apology for how Nigerians were treated here during the last weeks of xenophobic violence. Daniel Boalwa is a senior special assistant to the Deputy Senate President on political and constitutional matters and joins me from Lagos where we will discuss this further. Daniel, I thank you for your time. An apology has been tendered. How is it being received? Right. I, I think that, uh, thank you for having me, and I think that the apology is a right step in the right direction, and I believe the government of Nigeria received this apology with, uh, with a graceful heart. And I'm particularly happy that now South Africa is forthcoming with this uh, reconciliatory step. Otherwise, South Africa, in my view, will stand the risk of being isolated in Africa, especially because of the role South Africa is also playing as one of the big uh, players in South Africa, which was evidenced in the uh, visit of the president of South Africa uh, during the burial of uh, Zimbabwe, the late Zimbabwean president. Daniel, do you believe that South Africa, of course we say this on the back of three separate incidences of xenophobic violence, do you believe that we've turned a corner? Do you believe this will never happen again? And what gives you that belief? I don't believe that this will never happen because it is not orchestrated by the South African government. I would have believed this will be the end of it if, if, for example, from the intelligence perspective, I hold the view that this is a covert operations by the South African intelligence through the use of the citizen. Then I would have said because of the steps of the president, then I believe it will stop. But this is isolated incident by dissident, by people who do not share the ideals of South Africa. And you find that in every country where you will find some disgruntled youth that will resort to violence as a means to settle in discord. Because if you look at it, for example, one of the ways I will advise the government of South Africa to incorporate the people of South Africa, because when you hear people like Malema saying that uh, the problem is not their fellow Africans, but the white, I hold a different view from Malema. Because if you push that argument, what it means is that they should channel their aggression away from Africa, uh, from the Africans to the whites. But the problem is South Africa needs to amend their laws that will give favorability to their citizens to compete favorably in the economy. Because crime is a crime, and South Africa is a society that is believed to have law and order, is a society that is believed that the judicial system in South Africa is working. And if anybody commits a crime, that is a constitutional and legal way of redressing that issue. It will never be by resorting to extrajudicial killing of their fellow Africans. So, and because this is an a, this is expression of disgruntled youth, it will be a wrong assumption to say this is going to be the end. But what the government needs to do to cop it is much more important than what the South African citizens think or say about it. Your government has made demands on my government, saying that they demand the, the safety of Nigerian nationals living, working, and having a living here. How has my government assured you of that? Right. So my assumption is that the special envoy that was sent by your president to the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria may have given such assurances. A society where law and order exists will protect not just Nigerian nationals in South Africa, but all citizens of foreign countries living in South Africa, as long as law and order and law enforcement are functioning. Mm. You see, uh, there was an incident here in Lagos that we saw the video clip of uh, disgruntled youths attacking a car, SUV. In less than three minutes, the law enforcement came into the scene and delivered the people from that aggression. Most of the clips we have seen that went round and is, you know, that went viral were clips of incidents that would have occurred after several minutes before law enforcement will be there. So that is why people fall the opinion that the law enforcement in South Africa has accessories to a large extent to what is happening. I believe that with this interface and engagement by the two governments, that the mm -hmm. South African government is serious about protecting lives of not just South Africans, but non-South Africans in South Africa. Daniel, I'm going to play the devil's advocate here and say this is not the first time South Africa has incidents of xenophobic violence and attacks. And 
since this is the third, depending on who you ask, actually, some people say the fourth, has anyone ever been convicted of such? Were you guaranteed convictions of such? Because I don't quite remember who served time for xenophobic violence. So this then, then depends on the will of the South African government in dealing with this kind of situation. So if this fails, then the belief is that the South African government is not serious about that because a crime is a crime. Whether it is stealing, whether it is a crime of assault, whether it's a crime of arson or a xenophobic attack. But let me post a little bit and say that some other, I have heard that some South African public officials have even said that such an act is not xenophobic, that the act is just a mere crime. When we have a problem of understanding what exactly the nature of the crime is, mm -hmm. I will have no confidence that we'll be able to deal with the situation. But let me tell you the problem. We do not exist in isolation as a country. Our corporate existence as entities in Africa is the clear indication of our strength. When a country fails to act in this kind of situation where not just one national but many foreign nationals are involved, what that country is doing is that it is gradually isolating itself from the Commonwealth of Africa. And over a period of time, you will see that crime perpetrated by people who are disgruntled will now become part of foreign policy and it will affect foreign policy relations. So South African government will have to, in my view, mm. reflect on that mm. and deal with this decision decisively. The courts in South Africa must rise to occasion. All right, Daniel, let's move it along now. We still have, as the last time I checked, an invitation to President Buhari for a state visit here on the 3rd of October. I assume all things standing that that state visit still stands. But my question is, what is put on that agenda? Is it altered at all by the events of the last couple of weeks? As a takeaway from what... Uh happened after the special envoy from South Africa came to visit with the president, I, I read somewhere that the, the envoy said that part of the discussion that will be on the table when the president visits South Africa will be the compensation package for the Nigerian people. Now, what I don't know is whether that compensation will be a reality. But uh, it is not a bad idea to have that conversation along that line and see what the government of South Africa will do. International politics, one of the weakness of international politics is the weakness of engagement. Sometimes an issue that a national can, that's why I encourage the government of South Africa to deal with it decisively. Because when it involves engagement between one country to another, oftentimes a situation that can be treated within two weeks might linger up to three years and four years and after the lifetime or the term of that particular president who initiated the idea. Mm. So I think that the world is looking at South Africa. The world is looking at the government and democracy in South Africa, how they deal with a situ situation like that. And I believe that history will convey this message to the South African people that Nigerians cannot be their enemies. If you have a historic reflection of the sacrifices that the Nigerian people made for South Africa, so Nigerians cannot be individuals that will want to destroy the democracy in South Africa. But it doesn't matter the history. Anybody who commits a crime, even if he's a Nigerian in South Africa, he should face the wrath of the law. But let the law enforcement deal with the situation rather than <coughs> allowing the citizens to resort into jungle justice. Thanks to my guest, Daniel Boalua, the senior special assistant to the deputy Senate president on political and constitutional matters.